All right. Good evening, everybody. This is Tracy Matthewman, and welcome to the Go Green Hangout. I am from Toronto, Canada, and I am a platinum executive with Asante Organics. And tonight we're going to be talking about some of the dirty secrets inside some of your skincare products. And I have one guest with me right now, and I have another one joining me in a few minutes. Um, but before I get into the guest, I just want to make a couple notes for you guys who are here. Um, down below this video, there are two other videos that I really suggest you watch when you have a free um, moment. Um, they're very educational, and they will also talk um, a little bit more. Uh, they'll extend a little bit more about what we're going to talk about tonight, and um, they'll also present a solution for you, which we'll talk about tonight as well. And the other thing I wanted to say is that if you have any questions throughout this Hangout, then feel free to post your questions in the comments down below. If you're on YouTube directly, you can just post the, the questions there. And if you're on the gogreenhangout.com website, then you can also post them in the Facebook comments down below. Um, and just a reminder, we have these Hangouts every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. And we talk about different subjects, all to do with organics and natural organic living and skincare nutrition and sometimes um, you know some fun subjects so um, join us every Wednesday at 9 p.m. for these hangouts so let's get to it tonight we're talking about some of the dirty secrets in your skincare products and I myself have been now using a 100 percent organic line from Isante Organics, and it's an amazing line. But you know, bef before I was using that line, I was using some of the regular stuff you find off the book, uh, off the bookshelf, off the shelves at the drugstore, and also from other companies. Uh, you know, that I just trusted that they were safe and and okay for my skin. And later to find out that they're not quite what they seem. So my first guest who I have on with me tonight is Michael Weniger. He is the founder and CEO of Asante Organics. He is extremely passionate about chemical-free living, and he is also a formulator. So he knows his ingredients really, really well, and he's going to be sharing a lot of his information with us tonight. I'm going to go through some of the top ten ones that you should avoid and going to get some of his feedback on them. And then he's also going to talk about some other um, ingredients in you know various products that you should watch for as well. And I see that we just had Jana join us. Hey, Jana. Hi. Thank, thanks, thanks for, thanks for uh, I know it was last minute you coming in, and I really appreciate that. But I think that your knowledge will really contribute greatly to this Hangout. So thank you so much. Um, all right, so um, first thing I want to, I, I have some notes here just with some of the the top 10 ingredients that I found that are most harmful. And I want to just really kind of quickly run through some of those. And as I do that, I'm going to get Michael and Jana, if either one of you want to butt in at any point in time when I'm talking about these specific ingredients, then feel free to do so, OK? Uh, Michael, yeah, you're there. OK, good. <laughs> All right, so um, a couple of things I wanted just to mention before we get into the ingredients. Um, is, let me see here, there's over 7,000 different ingredients that are allowed to be used in skincare, and 1,000 of them are known to be harmful, and the uh, another 900 of them are known to cause cancer. And uh, if you're following this Go Green Hangout, if you've been watching us for a while, you know because you've heard us mention it before, but the cosmetics industry and the skincare industry, the I guess the beauty care industry, is not regulated. So there's nobody telling these companies that they can or cannot use certain ingredients. They they're just kind of trusted to you know not you know put stuff in there that's going to harm us. But nothing is regulated, so that's a little bit scary. Um, there's also an interesting point that 450 ingredients that are used in the United States, and I think probably partially Canada as well, um, are actually banned in the European Uni Union. And that's kind of interesting because I know over in Europe they have strict laws about you know, GMOs and various things that they really try and keep out of their, their foods and out of their beauty products and things, but yet over here in North America, we're not, you know, we still have to deal with those things. So that's just another little interesting point. 
Um, okay, so let's get into some of these ingredients. The first one is SLS, often called sodium lauryl sulfate or lauryl sulfate. Um, and this is, from what I know, I don't know all that much about it, but this is a sudsing agent. It's something that creates the bubbles, makes people feel like, you know, it's working because you got all these bubbles, and I don't know why we can we relate bubbles to being clean, but we do. Um, anyways, Michael or Jana, do you guys want to talk a little bit about SLS and maybe some of the, what it is and what sort of things it causes? <clears throat> Go ahead, Jenna, because you are also a formulator of a very uh, well-known skin care line that got bought out by a big company. So, you know, I'll let you have the floor, and then I'll come in after you. Well, um, what was the, Tracy, can you say that question again, please? Yeah, I just was wondering, um, for SLS, sodium lauryl sulfate? Oh, yeah. well. Um, just tell us what it is and some of the effects, negative effects that it can have and why we shouldn't use it. Well, it's a foaming agent and it's chemically processed and um, I think that it's made from a lye uh, base and the soap itself is, um, I once made soap because I thought that I would uh, manufacture soap and um, I noticed that while I was doing it and I forgot to put my gloves on and it totally burned my hands. It like went right through the skin and one of my fingers. And so um, that was really scary for me. And even though um, you, uh, the emulsification process when everything comes together is a very high heat. So, so supposedly when people use it, they don't, get at that result, you know, at that place where it will do that. Um, but Red Devil is where um, that um, soap agent uh, is derived from, and so it's, it's very dangerous. Anyway, we've been using that um, to make soap uh, for, to create that sussing agent for probably since um, 1930 or turn of the century. Um, at least, um, where things were not regulated. So, for me, um, because I know the danger when I'm making the products, that, well, that's why I ended up, um, Michael and Tracy, that's why I ended up developing spa products that did not include soap, like lotions and mists and salves, because I didn't have to deal with that um, Sensing agent and also it's an emulsification, emulsifying agent, and also it has preservative qualities, which the buildup of preservative qualities in the products are so strong to create a product line that can be on the shelf for indefinite time, so that when people make a sale to big companies, they can um, make a, a, you know, like to Bed Bath & Beyond or to um, Trader no, Whole Foods or, or a supermarket, they can do thousands and thousands or on QVC. They can sell thousands and thousands and, and, and they can tell their client that, you know, you'll have all this and you're just going to sell out because it says it's a natural product and it'll be on your, it'll be good on your shelf forever and ever where our products um, don't have these um, this sensing agents and these chemicals. So our shelf life is two years shelf life. But um, why would uh, you know you don't want to eat a hamburger like that's another that's a that's a day to day thing that we do and we eat this food like on a fast food because it's less expensive. But when we find out that something is still going to be um, it's still going to be preserved, you know, 20 years from now. Um, what is it doing to your system? It's killing you. It's a, it's, it's a slow um, death. We don't even look at it um, in that way because we're just looking at the advertising and the packaging and the pretty package and the pretty model and the pretty thing and this pretty that and the pretty little thing. And, it, and so by the time we have it at home, it's, it's, we're my, it's, it's a mindless experience where we're not involved. And um, this age of communication and information that we're in is very exciting just for one reason, is that we 
um, we don't have to rely on advertising and we can um, rely on being educated from what those we tr who we trust uh, uh, sound trusting uh, share with us so um, it's a and I think, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut in here for a second please do. I, please do. I think that we also um, have to look at you know because we're because we're limited on time and because what we're going to do, and we'll maybe go over a little bit tonight, because we want to really direct this particular hangout towards the dirty little secrets, uh, which you, you know, which we saw on the flyer in in the skincare industry. Since 1930, it started; it became a self-regulated industry. Thirty-six thousand chemicals that are that are you know ter terribly um, bad for you, um, anywhere from um, you know, cancer all the way to kidney, liver issues. Let's remember that you know um, everything that we use from a when we when we look at these chemicals now. Um, these are things that go on top of our skin. Maybe our maybe our our skin is damp. It might be wet. Whatever the case might be, but this will enter your bloodstream within 45 to 60 seconds when it's going on top of your skin. Now. Within eight and a half minutes, it's in your liver, all right? Within within eight and a half minutes, it's in it's it's in your kidneys and your liver, whatever it is that you're putting on yourself. So these companies, whether they be you know direct sales companies, and you know we can say, well, you know that's because it's out there. Now look at the network marketing industry or the home-based business industry. We are hoping and we're putting our faith in these companies that are out there that you know that these products. Are better than what we're buying off the shelf when they're not even even close. Some of them are not even that. You know, you're going to get a better product off the shelf. And I think, you know, whether it's a direct sales company, it doesn't matter. Whenever any company in the world goes per, to, goes to production or to produce a product, they have two options. They can make those products 100% chemical free and certified organic, or they can use chemical. And the thing is, what's going to determine which choice they're going to make as a company is simply their profit margin. So they can be in a profitable situation. We proved it as a company that we can make 100% chemical free and certified organic everything and still be in profit. So now we have to look at what's the other side of the coin. They will not forfeit a little bit of their profit to make a safe product. Hey, Michael, and just just on that quick point, one thing I one of my notes here is that synthetic lemon fragrance. Just just an example for profit. One pound of synthetic lemon fragrance is approximately a dollar a pound, and if they chose to use lemon oil, like pure essential lemon oil, that's apparently fifty dollars a pound. So that's a big difference. That's it. <laughs> And every company, again, they can make the chemical-free and organic side. But I think that's where you're going to find out how much a company really cares for their customer, for their consumer, for the family. You know, mm -hmm. we can talk about, you know, loving and hugging and kissing and sharing and caring and, and all these things inside the home-based business industry. But are they really? Look at those ingredients because this is what would happen. If there wasn't a compensation plan involved in some of these companies, if there wasn't any money, if there wasn't a compensation plan, you would pick that product up and you would read those ingredients. But, but people aren't doing that. They're just believing what they're being told. And again, if there, there wouldn't some, some of these products wouldn't even exist. But let's go on. SLS, that's a foaming agent. It's directly linked to cancer. It creates suds. So we think for the last... 50, 60 years, we need suds in order to be clean, which you don't. But there are ingredients, like you just said, that do create suds that are way, they are more expensive to make. But it still doesn't take the product at a fair market value. It still makes it affordable for everybody. But now, again, it's the companies. It's, it's on the company because they can make that. So SLS is just a foaming agent. That's all it is. And it is a and it is an actual ingredient that is directly linked. I'll tell you what exactly what it's linked to. 
because I do make these, I do buy these ingredients all day long. It's it, the SLS is is directly linked to cancer. It's to ring, it's linked to neurotoxicity, uh, reproductive toxicity, and it's linked to organ toxicity. So let's move on to another ingredient, and we'll just go over the um, the chemicals that that you should be looking at on your products. And if it's in there, do not use them. You shouldn't be using them. Okay, great. So the next one is phenyox. I can't, I can't pronounce any of these. You Maybe pronounce it. I had to crack my neck. If you can't pronounce them, then you probably shouldn't be using them, right? That's true. That's called phenoxyethanol. That's it. Phenoxyethanol is a preservative. Basically what happened is because we are now in the information age and we are in, in, in an era where now we have the, the, the research and the technology and we have the internet, which is a very big, very quick information. Well, we found out that parabens cause cancer. And those were what was preserving the methylparabens, the propylparabens, all the parabens were actual ingredients that would preserve products. And now because they got a really bad, huge wrap on what they do, they had to take them out of products, including Suave and including you know, different products that are on the shelf. And you know what? Almost everybody, every you know, for a company to say we don't have parabens, so what? So does a lot of companies because every company usually took them out. But what did they do? They replaced them with phenoxyethanol. And if you have phenoxyethanol in your ingredient deck, if I had a 55-gallon drum of phenoxyethanol sitting here, Tracy or Jana, and I said, say, hey, you know what? This product is... This ingredient is called phenoxyethanol. Now, let me tell you what, it, what about this ingredient. It is linked to 98% of all breast cancer removals, meaning when they remove the breast cancer and they study it, they find phenoxyethanol in it. So what I would like for you to do is put this on you three or four times a day. You would tell me never. But you know what? It's in those... It's in your products, in your ingredient decks. What are some of the more common products that you would find that, <clears throat> that particular ingredient? You're going to find it in um, skin, all skin care and hair care products. Okay. Where you're going to find it. Like shampoo, conditioners, yep. and yep. moisturizers, things like that? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Great. Um, okay, so another one to watch out for is, um, can we talk a little bit about these synthetic fragrances? Oh, yeah. Talk well, about that one. 147 chemicals per fragrance, pretty much. And that there, those chemicals aren't listed on the label either, are they? No, no they'll just say fragrance or yeah. perfume. And a lot of it is animal urine. This is gross. Well, the problem, also the problem with those uh, fragrances is just uh, they're flammable. They're also flammable. And um, a lot of these companies, even for small businesses, it's like, let's say like mine didn't go public. So if if a if a if a if a company is selling wholesale to a person like myself, a lot of times they won't send you the line sheets unless you ask them. And they'll say they're essential oils, but they're not really essential oils. They're fragrance oils. Okay, so a person like myself, I had to come to a place because I had some friends that were getting some oil somewhere else and they were starting a business and I knew that this cucumber oil and this mango oil and this other oil, that they were not essential oils. Also because of the price they were paying. Also, I just called them and I asked the company and they said, well, we call them essential oils. I said, can I have the line sheets? So I got the line sheets and they're fragrance oils. What are line sheets? People they tell them. you exactly if they're toxic or caustic, if they're essential oils, what's in them, how they're made. Um, and these are parts, maybe, maybe the smallest fraction of a plant, like the tiniest fraction of a plant, and then fake um, essences and a lot of alcohol and formaldehyde. And it's... Um, you know, that's why if you go into a, like a Nordstrom or, and then you're, you're, you know, around the holidays or a Bon Marche or a Macy's and they're standing there and they're just spraying you randomly 
and you have a hard time just even walking around. I know that anybody in this company that's working with these um, natural products for even a month or two will start having very serious allergic reactions that they've always had. See? But when they're filled with toxins, they're not feeling like that's a reaction because they're all stuffed up and they've got these toxins going on. So it's just like every day. But once they start to detoxify and then they're walking in that they feel like they're being attacked. They are being attacked. Their immune system is being attacked. It's degenerating their immune system and then all of a sudden they get sick with a cold. Well, they say it's this person that was walking around, this person that was walking around that gave them the cold or their child or this and that. But honestly, if they had a not toxic free lifestyle, probably seven out of ten times they, they probably won't get the cold or they'd be able to get rid of it within three days. I've been a vocal coach for 30 years, okay? Maybe five years I took off. I've been in a situation where I was running that business. I was in the cold weather. I was doing fairs, all kinds of things. So I'd get a cold, like start of a cold right away. But because I do foot rubs on myself, I use natural products, and I take all these different organic, um, you know, powders that I would capsulize and take because I couldn't find them on the market, I would get rid of it within like three days. And then I have friends that have it for three weeks. And then this really has a lot to do with this whole thing with the chemicals because what happens is, is that I'll have a, a friend in the same environment, the same cold, should have it for three weeks, and then it would come back four months later. But it really never went away. So then the immune system is broken down. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. So during season change, we should be doing things. I mean, there's so much to the home care you know, system and using only natural, I mean, only organic products, if you Thanks. can find them. Okay, well, um, yeah, you're totally right on that. I agree. And, and just, so, oh, I just want to say one more thing, sorry. Essential oils, essential oils, 100% organic essential oils. That was, that's what I should have said sooner, but that is the antithesis. Okay. <laughs> All right, and just another little point on what you said is, I know, like, when I go to, like, the hardware store or here in Canada we have a store called Canadian Tire and it's it, there's a certain area where it's just all cleaning products and every time I don't even walk down the aisle first of all because I don't buy any of those products but just walking across the end of the aisle and you just smell all of that stuff and it, right now I just feel like it almost gives me an instant headache so I totally know what you're talking about but um, let's move on to another one we've got the next one would be formaldehyde that, that doesn't be, sound very good. Is that going to preserve me till like I'm 500 years old or what? Yeah, you know, there, there's that's 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 a fun little one because a lot of companies will use that, and what they do is they use the chemical name for it. So then you really don't know what it is, and who who knows who looks it up, right? So if you're using any products that has what's called sodium hydroxymethylglycinate. And that's what formaldehyde is. That is an, that is an actual um, <clears throat> product that's another preservative. And again, you're right. If it can pres preserve dead bodies, these companies are thinking, boy, you know what? I'll get away. And it's cheap. But I'm going to tell you what. It leaches formaldehyde into the bloodstream, which is extremely, that's really one of the worst. And it's directly linked to cancer. So... You know, if you see sodium hydroxymethylglycinate on your on your um, ingredient deck, I would be calling the company and asking them, hey, what's going on here? Because um, don't let any company in the world tell you, well, we just use a little bit. It's it's the regulatory amount. Just We're even below that. No. Just being there is too much because it will not come out of your body. It will go into an organ or it will go into a weak area of your body and hibernate. It will incubate and wait for more and more and more and then kaboom, you're going to have a very bad doctor's report and you're going to wonder, how did that get there? And I can guarantee you, every single time they remove something, they're studying it these days and finding out all it's linked to is all these chemicals. In our, because we're just not doing it with one product. We're putting it on in the morning, we're putting it on in the evening, we're taking a shower with it. We're just, you know, we're compounding, we're compounding this in our systems, and and we were not made to be walking chemical factories. 
Yeah. So, um, really. and that's really you know what if, if, if you're going to uh, you know talk about anything with formaldehyde, you know what Johnson and Johnson just got um, just got uh, uh, hit by the government a couple times already now for having too much formaldehyde, too much sodium hydroxymethylglycinate in their baby products. In their baby products. Yeah, wasn't there a big lawsuit or something, and they had to remove? And have they even done it in North America? I know they have in Europe. Yeah, they they, they got it right here in North America, and um, and uh, you know, and, and and then they got recaught. So they said they were taking it out, and they retested it, and now they said we'll have it all out of there by 2015. So what are you supposed to do? Use it till then? Yeah, that's right. I remember that. Okay, so you definitely don't want to be putting your body in formaldehyde every day or multiple times a day. No. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go on to the next one. Now, there's glycols, which apparently there's numerous types of glycols, and the most one of the more popular ones is propylene glycol. Right, which is which is also you know a PEG, a PEG. If you see a PEG or anything with the word glycol after it. Here's what a glycol is. Um, <clears throat> you're going to find glycols are derivatives of antifreeze, break mm. fluid, and very extremely strong industrial cement floor cleaner. So mm. if you see anything in your label that says PEG, and then there's a number next to it, the PEG start at 5, and they go to 150. And the higher the PEG, the more terribly dangerous it is to you, and these pegs and glycols are directly linked to cancer. So if you see that on your label, I'd be asking around and asking why that's in there. Because all these things that we're talking about right now have nothing to do with skin care. They have nothing to do with hair care. They have nothing to do with the skin, the scalp, or any reason why you bought that particular product, what we're going over tonight, none of these things benefit you in what you think you're using. These are just very, very cheap, inexpensive ingredients that are substitutes for the good things that the companies should be using. Right. Jana, do you have anything to say about glycols? I'm just... Um I'm floored. I, <laughs> I'm from New York, and when I when I lived there in my uh, 20s and way before that, I was a product horse. I bought every, you know, that was the beginning of my exploration of being an apothecarist and an aromatherapist, but creating products. I, I got everything. I tried everything, and I threw out so much. And I was saying earlier that I also was an administrative. Um, in the Noxema skincare uh, advertising world, and I really got to see the flip side of what that really was. I mean, as far as who was using it, what the skin looked like, what how it could burn through the formica on my desk when I was bored from not having anything to do, and using the act, an antiseptic skin cleanser and that one little dot, that one little pen dot that couldn't come off of anything, anything for months. Boy, that stuff, I was so bored one day, I, I just used that. And it just went right through the Farmica. And it took that spot right away. And I thought, gosh darn it, I am never going to go down that ski slope with that Noxema skin care on my face. So that was, that, was in the 80, that was in the 80s, in the 70s. And, you know, it's, uh, it's too late for us. It's way too late. We're, we're eating. We, we have to go around with this tiny small print that the companies have done uh, with a triple bifocal to find out what is safe for us to use. So if somebody is sharing that, you know, if we're telling people we're exposing this, I, I just, I really, I'm so excited to be a part of this revolution. I just really think that, you know, it's about time that I'm working with people that uh, I can finally. I, I can express myself and, and the sadness that I have from where we're at and maybe that instead of being stuck there that we have found a solution and that we can move forward and educate one another. Yeah. And life. you know I remember using Noxema when I was young when I was younger and 
I remember using oil of Olay twice a day because, you know, I thought I would keep the wrinkles away. And I mean, I used all that stuff too. And I'm, I'm just so fortunate that I've been educated on this stuff. So now I can teach my daughter about, you know, we're in the store walking down the aisle and she says, you know, it, this today it was about food, but she said, well, what about this, Mom? And I said, no, nah, that's poison. <laughs> like, I just teach her, you know, like, the stuff you just don't ever want to touch, right? And she uses yes. everything from Asante. And so, um, okay. What, I, just, I just want to say one thing, uh, Tracy, sure. on that note. It's just that, that this chiropractor, that I, this chiropractor I go to, he, they make their own handy wipes for their baby's tush. I'm serious because they won't use anything on the market. So I, I, my heart goes out to you. I'm so glad that all parents are finding this company. It just must be such a relief. Yeah, I know exactly. All right, we got a, we got a ton more ingredients, and it's 9:30. And we did mention tonight's going to be a little bit longer than normal. But the next one we want to talk about is dimethicone. I don't Dimethicone. know. Dimethicone. Dimethicone. If you ask any company, they'll say, "Oh, well, well, that's just sand. That just smooths things out." But here's the deal about dimethicone. It's not about the sand that 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 makes that dangerous. It goes through a extremely, very vigorous acid wash, and the acid wash, which is you, which is chemicals which now are in your dimethicone, are directly linked to cancer. And so sometimes it's not even the ingredient, it's what the ingredient goes through and some residue from that ingredient exactly. processing. Yep. And that would be the case here. Okay, so it's derived from sand. It goes through this acid process. What are some of the... I mean, you mentioned cancer. Is there any... What products is it normally found in and what are some of the more well-known effects, negative effects of it. You're going to find dimethicone in your conditioners. You're going to find dimethicone in your skin care products. Um, all of them. You know, when we're talking skin care, I'm talking everything about skin care. I mean, it doesn't matter what skin care product you, you look at. It's, you know, whether it's for the face, for the eyes, whatever, look on that ingredient deck. And if you're seeing dimethicone in there, you don't want to be using that, especially when you're talking about skin care companies or skin care in products that go on the face because right here by your temples at, and around your eyes and your eyelids is the thinnest area of skin on your entire body and this stuff is going through so you don't want to be um you know so you know you need to look at your labels uh, again you know at one point in time i think in the next couple, couple three years you're going to be looking at all your labels and whether you're in 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 this industry or not you're gonna you're gonna be so you're gonna see some things come to surface with some of these companies, um, networking networking or not, and and all these uh, things that are going on that are public now, you know, pe all these companies getting caught doing different things. So, you mm -hmm. know, dimethicone again is a is a situation where um, 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 where it's how it's made. It's not the sand itself. It's the acid wash it goes through, and there's the only the only way you can get that to to um, become dimethicone is come through that acid wash. Okay, all right. Okay, um, so we got another one here that is polysorbate. Now, is that um, tell us what that is? Okay, polysorbate is found in a lot of skincare products, and um, it comes with numbers after it, like polysorbate 20, polysorbate 40. It has different numbers as to how strong it is, how when they talk about the activity, the, the activity of it, how strong it, it would be. Let me tell you something. It's made with ethylene oxide. The polysorbate has been found it's it's in, in it's an ingredient that's found in industrial chemicals. Actually, New Jersey banned it for a while and made um, some of the Walgreens and, and, and companies take baby products and personal care products off the, off the shelf with polysorbate in it because it's directly linked to cancer again. Now, look at what we're doing. We're talking about these, these ingredients, and every single one of them are, are found in some of these products in just one entire product. So you're getting hit with all this stuff. 
just there's just not one. Yeah. That, yeah. that makes the cream look um, creamier. That particular ingredient is one of the things that's also tumor causing, which is really a a wild trade-off for something that looks creamy. Sorry, yeah, I was muted. So it actually makes it makes it look creamy, or it actually makes it creamy. It 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 makes it creamier, but it makes makeup look creamier. Oh, okay, interesting. It's so funny. Like how, it makes it look more, you know. It's funny how so many products there's ingredients in there just solely for our vision, so that when we look at it, it looks attractive, but yet it adds nothing to what we're trying to accomplish right. with it. Isn't that funny how that they do that? And, Absolutely. You know, it's like white rice. What, it's crazy. It's like they bleach it so that because we want it to look white and pretty, but it's not good for us. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, collagen and elastin. Now that, I, I think some of that comes from animals. Michael, you can talk about that, but is that not what's naturally in our skin that over as we age, starts to diminish, so they're trying to put it back into our skin. Can you talk right. about that? Right, exactly. And here's the biggest facade or the biggest cosmetic optical illusion around. And there, and then you're going to find this in skincare products, in the facelift products that are out there on the market. There, some of those facelift products, they talk about the collagen and the elastin that they have them, in them. Let me tell you what. There's only one place you're going to get collagen and elastin, and it's going to be in dead cows and dead pigs. That's where it comes from. Okay, these are cow and pig parts. Okay, where they get the collagen and elastin from. It doesn't even absorb into the skin. What it it, it cannot it cannot be molecularized. It can't be in in, in it, it it does nothing. Here's what it does for the skin. It clogs the pores. It shines up the skin. And once it gets in there, it'll it'll expand, so it plumps, and it makes a, it makes it optically look like a wrinkle diminished. And this stuff, again, if 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 we walked into a slaughterhouse or a butcher shop, and I said, "Look, there's some collagen and elastin. Start rubbing these pig parts on you," and these you wouldn't do it. And and the thing is, is there's no benefit to the skin whatsoever. It doesn't do anything beneficial for the skin whatsoever other than creating a cosmetic trick. So if you have a product, whatever that product might be, and you see collagen and elastin, just remember it's no different than pulling up here uh, to the butcher shop and asking for some, you know, dead pigs and cow parts and just grind them on you. That's all it is. So actually create any sort of permanent, it's, it's a temporary thing that just washes away or... And it, it won't even it it's and it won't even wash. It'll stay there over time because you just um, um, it it just keeps um, building up and building up and building up. It's only used in products for the appearance that something is happening that really is never happening. Okay, I made a calendula uh, cream that uh, sold to people that were buying creme de la mer like for ninety some odd dollars. And uh, they were telling me that the calendula cream was helping their skin strengthen and tighten. And I used it because calendula is considered the flower of the sun, the marigold from the marigold family. And it strengthens and supports the um, skin cell tissue. So there are um, totally natural ingredients that, um, if you, if you, that you can use in, in place of something so detrimental to the health of the skin. Awesome. Okay, um, that's good. And you know, here at Asante, we have an amazing anti-aging line and skincare products that don't have any of these ingredients. So, you know, we're trying to educate you guys on some of this stuff, so you can go and look at your ingredients and go look at products before you buy them, and maybe reconsider and and look for something cleaner like Asante Organic. So, all right, we got a couple more. Um, this one, I, again, I can never pronounce them, but. Triethylonamine or something like that. <laughs> like, Triethylamine. What yeah. that is, that is an ingredient that, um, and what that basically is, it's a, any. Whenever you th see anything ending with a a m i n e, let me tell you something. You stay away from it like 
like crazy because it is an amine produced by it, it's it's produced by reacting ethylene oxide, which is considered extremely toxic, toxic, and ammonia, which is also very toxic. And there's Gross. very strong evidence that if you see anything with the amine or triethylamine in in a human skin, the immune it's it's, it's terrible for the immune system and the respiratory toxin. Um, one or a lot of studies show that it shows a sense of organ effects at very low doses. I mean, just low doses of this actually used, and this is used in skincare and and mud packs and things like that. And so, what you're going to see with this particular ingredient, you're putting that mud pack around the mouth, the eyes, the lips, and and it's been shown to show positive mutation results in breast cancer and it shows been shown to cause liver um, bladder and liver cancer as well in changes in testicles there how do you like that for an ingredient um, one thing I've noticed just in my own research in ingredients is that a lot of things actually affect reproductive systems and you know that could maybe be why fertility rates are so high and you know, like people are having challenges in that area. So, okay. Next one we've got aluminum starch and octan succinate. <laughs> <laughs> octan salicinate, yes. Yeah, that one. Uh, and it's <laughs> aluminum. Whenever you see anything um, with uh, any types of aluminum in there, or if it just says aluminum on the, uh, as far as, you know, an ingredient or it's, it's, you can guarantee that it's going to have. You're going to find traces of arsenic, lead, heavy metals. I mean, it's very um, extremely. You don't want to be using anything with that. And all these, like I said, all these these ingredients we're talking about this evening have nothing to do in, with the skin. So why are they in these products? That's it's just not that. Well, why why did they put that one in the let's say? What was that for? Why did they put it in there for a preservative? Yeah. yeah. And along with you know we'll mention some more sodium benzoate, potassium sorbate. Those are preservatives as well. If you see those in your ingredient decks, they're not organically de derived. So basically, what's going to happen with those two ingredients too is you're going to, those are directly linked to cancer. So, um, you know, a lot of these ingredients that we're talking about and, and, and birth defects and neurotoxicity, organ toxicity, all this stuff. So, you know, tonight what we're trying to do is, um, like um, Tracy mentioned, is make you aware of the ingredients in these um, different products. i got to tell you something because this, this one really gets to me. It's an actual mud that you would put on your face that has most of these ingredients in 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 the um, in there and and I love this when they put this on the uh, on its own label warning do not put this product on skin with open cuts exposed tissue inflammation or sores do, keep out of reach of children avoid eye area what are you doing using a product with a warning label like that. And this is a very popular product right now. And I can't even imagine how anybody cannot not, like I said, if I add every one of these ingredients we talked about today in 55-gallon drums, and we said, okay, this is what this is, this is what this does, go soak in it, put it on you. You would never, ever do it. So what are you doing allowing companies, because you have choice. You don't have to use these things. You know, I, 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 I've seen a, a company <clears throat> that's a, a home-based business. You know, it's basically you can build a business with. It's a networking company. And they just said, oh, we just redesigned our skincare product line. It is so clean. It doesn't contain phosphates. It doesn't contain this. And it names everything it doesn't contain. But then... What about the phenoxyethanol? 
What about the pegs? What about all this other stuff? See, they'll tell you, a lot of these companies will tell you what they don't have, but they forget to, ex they, but they, they just, oh, whoops. They just didn't tell you what they do have. Yeah, so you have actually, to look at these things very carefully. Yeah, actually, there's, there's, I've been caught before where I've been looking for an ingredient list, and I'll go look on their website for that, and all they'll list is all the good stuff, you know, the aloe vera and the, the coconut oils and all the good stuff, and you nowhere can you find a full ingredient deck. They only list the good stuff. And I email the company, and I'm like, please send me your ingredients, and there's no, there's no way for them, they, could, they couldn't send it to me because they... I guess they just didn't have it. There was nowhere online. They couldn't send me a PDF of the ingredients. The only way to know the ingredients is to buy the product and see on the label or the little piece of paper that's inside the box or something. Right. You Sometimes to, it's really hard to find the ingredients, and that's a warning right there. Exactly. And you have to become very aware of that. Again, like I said, we've talked about all these chemicals this evening, and remember, every single company that you look at let, let's just say in the retail market, if they have these things, do not use them. If you're in the networking industry and they have those things in their ingredient decks, then you know what? Again, always remember, every single company in business around the world can make their ingredient decks 100% chemical-free, use certified organic ingredients in everything, 100% chemical-free and certified organic, or they use chemicals. You can't be 25, 58, or 99% organic. You're 100% or you're chemical, one or the other. So the only reason why a company would choose one or the other is the cost of the raw ingredients. So that's when you'll know how you'll know the ethics, the character, the integrity, and everything that company that you're looking at will stand for because that's all found on the label, not the front of the label on the back of the label. And then they could make it and still make profit, but they are they want to make more profit. So they're, they they just aren't telling you. And and in the end, and, and a lot of these people in these companies, you know, I've been in the in this industry for 30 years. It amazes me. They won't even use their own products. They won't even use them. I know so, that's amazing. Um, okay, there's one last product I want or ingredient I want to just touch on, which is triclosan, and I've done a little bit of reading on this, and it's it acts as an antibacterial, I believe, and it's in a lot of um, hand sanitizers as well as toothpaste. And I know right now a lot of people are you know aware of the dangers of fluoride, so they they go and they seek out this non-fluoride toothpaste, but oftentimes even in that in those toothpastes where there's no fluoride, there's other things like not, you know artificial flavors, artificial colors, and things like triclosan. So, Michael, can you talk a little bit about triclosan or or Jana, either one of you? Let Michael start. I'm enjoying listening. Well, you know the triclosan is 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 is, is, is you're right. It's an ingredient. It's an ingredient that is extremely dangerous as as far as ingredients go, and what every company gets away with with all these ingredients we've been talking about is that they try and uh, keep it under a certain percentage, a little bit, things like that. But we all have to remember that these never leave our bodies. So when you're looking at, if we want to summarize up everything that we looked at today, what I would, tell, what I would say is <clears throat> if you look at your label and we recap and we say, look, if you got sodium hydroxymethylglycinate, if you got, you know, phenoxyethanol, if you got dimethicone, if you got any of the pegs or any of the glycols whatsoever, the the, the oils, the isopropyl mistrates, the mineral oils, the these are these are all synthetic, you know, the, the oils are all pretty much synthetic and they do nothing for the skin other than clog, right? But the fragrances, um, the sodium benzoate, the potassium sorbate, the, the you know, the polysorbates, things like that. You know what? These are all things that are directly related to developmental and reproductive toxicity, birth defects, or neurotoxins, organ toxicity, and linked directly to cancer. And if they're compiling up 
and you got more than one in your in your in your deck, you're getting a double dose or a triple dose, and things like that. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, I would say, you know, really, really examine your labels and, and don't feel bad, you know, if you're questioning, you know, your companies. You should question them. I would turn around and say to a company, in this day and age, we're in 2013, not 1985 anymore. I'd turn around and say, let me ask you something. Why do you have phenoxyethanol in this, in this product? Why do you have glycols? Why do you have these things? They don't do anything for anybody. None of these things that we talked about this evening have any benefit whatsoever. But they do have one thing in all in common, directly linked to cancer. And that and I, is a very sad situation. Can but, I say yes. add something to what you're saying? Well, it just came to me that um, I, one thing I do remember and making my products and what people would say when they would come back was is that they were using these other products that they bought on the market or you know direct sales that had a lot of chemicals in them or they weren't really sure they did until they found my products and then all of a sudden their psoriasis or their eczema and all these things just subsided and went away and they kept saying it made it go away I mean I'll never forget I had one person who had like 34 stitches who was waiting for me and, and at my where I was selling and she said uh, Jana, this is uh, th this all these stitches. The marks are all gone from your comfrey from your comfrey salve, and she was like yelling it. And it shouldn't, you know. It's just like so she couldn't believe it. I mean, I knew that, but I you can't. It's just the person telling. You know, people have to try these things so they can see that their skin will heal instead of it, using something that clogs their pores and yeah. makes their skin degenerate. And and having and not heal. And having ultimate health also means, you know, your skin is the largest organ on your entire body. So that's what you really want. I mean, you have to breathe. So when you're using these collagens, think, again, dead cows and dead pigs and, and horses. I mean, that's where this comes from. Elastin, same exact thing. Clogging, clogging, oils, the mineral oils. The, 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 the It says oil after it, pretty much, you know, um, <clears throat> You know, it, unless it's a 100% certified organic essential oil, then that isn't the case. But, you know, uh, one good thing to, to, to remember when you're looking at all this, these skin care products, because when you develop, I'm a developer of skin care, we have clinicals, we have patents on our things, and, and you have to use, we use a lot of beneficial um, ingredients. So when you look on there, a lot of times when you see skincare, you'll have an ingredient deck that's large, right? And remember one thing. I tell everybody, every single ingredient, if that company truly was an organic company, every ingredient would say organic before they list the ingredient. Okay, it would say organic this, organic this, organic, organic, organic. And if it does not, remember that anything that's put in the ground from a seed the time it's harvested has been sprayed at least three times and anywhere between three and six, but at least three times with over 400 chemicals, pesticides and herbicides that are now part of the plant. So when you look at these ingredients in these products, just remember that all those active, beautiful things that they talk about did not grow in the same field. So if you got... 15 ingredients, it's been sprayed 45 times with 400 chemicals linked to cancer. That's a very important thing to remember. So we're in a day and age now where you have choice, and for the same price that you buy these chemical products for, you can use 100% chemical-free, certified organic, and toxic-free products for the same exact price. So when you're proposed with that question, on one side are all these things you're presently using and all the, have all these chemicals in there, hundreds of them linked directly to cancer. On the right hand side are all the same products. They're 100% chemical free and certified organic for the same price. What would you choose? And, and, and that's the most simplest question I could. But I can tell you one thing, the answer will be same, the same every single time you ask that question. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tracy. Okay, well, thank you to both of you for coming on and sharing your wisdom. Um, we touched on quite a few different ingredients, and 
what I can do is um, in the comments down below I'll make a summary of those ingredients so you know how to spell them you might not how to know how to uh, pronounce them like me but at least you'll know how to spell them and um, just before we tie this up I want to just mention again that Asante Organics does have an amazing line of skincare and um, anti-aging products and baby care products that you can feel a hundred percent safe putting on your skin knowing that it's it's you know very safe um, non it's toxic free and they're just they work just as well and they're just they're not even any more expensive than what you're probably already buying so and compare them compare yeah. them because you will get better results with these products than you probably will with the products you are using so the results will be better with clinicals and what I like about this permanent guaranteed you, permanent results and you need to use a lot less because each drop is so good for you. Potent. It's more potent. Oh my god. Potent. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. Just a quick reminder. Any last questions you guys have, just post them down below in the comments and we'll definitely make sure you get your answers. Um, get back to the person who sent you to this Go Green Hangout and ask them for a catalog or ask them for their website link so you as well can start using some of our amazing products from Asante Organics. And next week we'll be back at 9 p.m. Eastern with another interesting hot topic. So be sure to join us then. And I wish everybody has a absolutely amazing week. So take care, everybody. And thanks again, Michael and Jana, for being here with me tonight. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.